Hi gang, I'm my radar meteorologist Matthew Capucci. We're tracking a serious situation for Nova Scotia as Hurricane Fiona continues to churn north. Hurricane and tropical storm watches have been issued for Atlantic Canada. We also have a hurricane warning in effect for Bermuda. Here's Fiona on Thursday afternoon. It was still listed as a Category 4, although its satellite presentation to me suggests more a Category 3. Regardless, maximum eyewall winds were listed at more than 120 miles per hour or 195 kilometers per hour, and the wind field is expanding in size. It was located just under 400 miles southwest of Bermuda and was moving north northeast at 15 miles an hour or roughly 22 kilometers per hour. It should sideswipe Bermuda late tonight into early Friday morning with strong tropical storm force winds flirting with hurricane force. Fiona will continue moving northeast before its path curves left or west a little bit come Friday night. Watch what happens. A trough or a strip of broad low pressure wrapped within a dip in the jet stream rolls off the U.S. east coast and captures Fiona. That tugs it west. Here you see these two ingredients coming together. The mid-level support from the north and west, and then Fiona from the southwest. They combine and begin the process of extra-tropical transition, or converting Fiona into a mid-latitude storm. That also means an influx of jet stream energy, so even if Fiona becomes a non-tropical system, it'll still be just as strong as a Category 2 hurricane. All that wind energy will give Fiona a dangerous storm. Environment Canada, or Canada's equivalent to the U.S. National Weather Service, is calling it a hybrid low, writing, quote, most regions will experience some hurricane force winds. Similar cyclones of this nature have produced structural damage to buildings. They're calling for Fiona to make a landfall somewhere near Lake Breton Island in eastern Nova Scotia on Saturday morning. Maybe a hurricane, maybe losing tropical characteristics, doesn't matter. Winds of up to 175 kilometers per hour or 108 miles per hour. These sorts of winds will cause structural damage similar to that of an EF0 or EF1 tornado. Keep in mind the strongest gusts will be relegated to the coastline. Inland winds could gust closer to 100 to 140 kilometers per hour or about 60 to 85 miles per hour. Now is the time to prepare. Ahead of the storm, make sure you trim any tree limbs that could fall on your home. Bring in anything that could become a projectile. Plan for extended power outages and ensure you have everything you need in an emergency kit ready to go. That means medication, anything for about four or five days. Part of what's making this storm so strong is an air pressure dipole. That's a sharp contrast between two opposite weather systems. Outside this extreme low pressure vortex, we also have a strong high pressure system southeast of Greenland. Air will funnel from the high towards the low. There's a tight gradient or change with distance of air pressure, which means stronger winds. It's just like skiing. The steeper the hill, the faster you'll go. Now, just how strong is this low? Well, look, it actually set an all-time nationwide air pressure record in Canada. See the purple within the storm? That's record low pressure. Think of it this way. A low pressure system is like a whirlpool. The greater the deficit of missing air in the middle, the greater the inward vacuuming effect and the stronger the winds. Fiona will be missing about 7% of the atmosphere's ambient mass. The all-time minimum air pressure ever observed in Canada was 940.2 millibars at St. Anthony in Newfoundland on January 20th, 1977. This storm could have an air pressure between 928 and 935 millibars, likely setting a new nationwide record for Canada. Keep in mind, average air pressure at sea level is about 1,015 millibars, so again, like 7 or 8% more. That could make it the strongest storm on record to hit Canada, assuming someone on land measures that air pressure. It'll weaken quickly as the low fills in over the Gulf of St. Lawrence. On the east side of the storm, winds will be out of the south. That'll push water ashore as a serious storm surge. One to two and a half meters of surge is possible, so let's say between three and eight feet. That's especially true in eastern Nova Scotia, so places like Lewisburg or Little Lorraine. Residents might consider removing their boats from the water ahead of any storm surge. There will also be plenty of erosion and coastal inundation. In addition to wind and surge, up to 150 to 175 millimeters of rainfall is possible, so let's say about like six or seven inches. That could cause localized freshwater flooding. As the counterclockwise spinning low pressure system tugs down a filament of cold air in its wake, it could actually result in a thump of snowfall in interior Labrador. Up to 20 centimeters could fall, so about eight inches, but keep in mind that's over unpopulated areas of the tundra. Meanwhile, this is as bad as it gets for mariners in the Northwest Atlantic. Individual waves could be almost 30 meters or 100 feet high. That's crazy. Simply stated, this could be a once in a generation storm, so you have to take it seriously. That part of the world sees 
storms, but very rarely ones this intense. Keep it tuned to MyRadar on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and of course in the MyRadar app. Aaron J. Jack is in the field tracking this from Nova Scotia. I'll be here keeping tabs on it, and we'll be with you around the clock. Follow My Radar on social media Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Download My Radar on iOS, Android, Amazon Alexa, Xbox, and Windows.